Hey guys, welcome back. I'm joined by the lovely Mrs. Poet. Hi. And we also have Ryan and Selena Frederick on. Go ahead and wave. Say hello, guys. Hey, hey. guys. <laughs> uh, Ryan and Selena are the leaders of a movement called Fierce Marriage, and it's really cool. Uh, Mrs. Poet and I have already gained a lot from it. Uh, they've gotten a book called Fierce Marriage we wanted to talk to them about, amongst some other issues as well. And some. Uh, they also have a really great podcast, very popular podcast on the website. So I'll have all their links below if you guys want to check them out. But if you guys are interested in really fine-tuning your marriage and figuring some stuff out, here's a couple that really has done a lot right. Uh, Ryan, uh, Ryan and I go way back. How long have we been friends now for? Uh, 15 years. Yeah, so that's that's a long time. That's like way way smaller percentage of your life because you're so much older than me. But it's a big percentage of mine as well. <laughs> so. You're such a punk. R Ryan is <laughs> one year to the day, one year younger than me. But uh, you're like that weird uncle, you know? Like, <laughs> Love the weird uncle. <laughs> I pictured Uncle Eddie. <laughs> yeah, that one. Hey, Clark. Yeah. Hey, Clark. Yeah. So Ryan and I go way way back, and then since then you've blown up and done this stuff and it really fits well you guys have got a really special marriage and yeah. so uh just a few months back mrs poet was wrong on something and oh, i was yeah. trying to <laughs> that one time like never 2000 <laughs> never so she was just being an idiot and i was like totally right <laughs> yeah and uh but do you remember this ryan i called you this was uh maybe five or six months ago uh oh, yeah, and i was just yeah venting and asking some advice and stuff and you helped us through it and uh, i guess what we were struggling with is yeah i mean uh kids wearing us down and work and life balance stuff it's always life balance stuff but uh trying to teach me a little bit on hey how do i fight better and fight fair so uh, i guess i really wanted to get into your book and all that stuff but since i just kind of naturally brought that up first uh <laughs> maybe <laughs> maybe you could speak on hey how, how can we fight fair to make sure that you know, we don't get into the red line, yeah. crazy, throwing stuff, yeah, yeah. rage thing. Yeah. How do we fight yeah, well? We've been there. Yes. And we've been there. I think it's easy to, to kind of go to your lowest common denominator when you're when the emotions are high mm -hmm. and you're fighting and you just you know, you're entrenched in your position. So one of the analogies that we we use uh, when we teach couples and when we, we when we're fighting ourselves is this idea. It's not necessarily just an analogy, but mostly it's an analogy, and it's to fight <laughs> naked, right? It's got some very practical um, application, both literally, which is hilarious, right? Because it's hard to stay mad when one of you is disrobing right. <laughs> in front of the other. Sure. Uh, but it's also, uh, I think, I think the the other application is is more in the analogy of it, right? Mm -hmm. So when you if you think about being naked, I know if you're heading to war and you're and you're clothesless right or you're naked you can't you can't carry any weapons with you uh, your defenses are down you're not you're not shielded by anything and i think when we go into battle with each other we tend to want to be you know totally gilded up with the armor and we want to have all the of our weapons, weapons. <laughs> and also when you're naked you can't hide anything up your sleeve there's no like mm -hmm. low blows or tricks so that way when you're talking you're actually listening to each other mm -hmm. you're being vulnerable with each other you're not That's being good. defensive mm -hmm. we don't say uh, the weapons we would uh, be things like using the D word or divorce, right? Because divorce is, is not an option for us. So we're never going to use that. Hey, I'm going to, that as a threat to mm -hmm. when, when in the, in the midst of a heated argument, or you're always like this, or you he always really do likes this. the always and yeah. never statement. Absolutely. Those like, are his favorite. Words. So <laughs> never <laughs> say oh, always and never, you familiar. always do that. Are you <laughs> never <laughs> help? But like, really exactly. never, like, never. Yeah. yeah. Or even worse is like you're just like your mother or you're just like y your father or your father did that. Those are like low blows. Those mm -hmm. are supposed to be considered weapons and things. Yeah. But also cheap shots. And those are cheap shots and tricks. And you're not holding anything back mm -hmm. to use against your spouse, say a past hurt or something. Well, and the whole underlining kind of goal with this is, you know, we're not fighting to injure and wound each other and not to just express and blow up. But really, we're seeking reconciliation. That's the ultimate right. goal. Not just seeking to be right even though I'm always right. <laughs> right, me too. Seeking reconciliation. Yes, Mrs. Level, <laughs> Mrs. <laughs> Poet knows this very well. Right. Yes. <laughs> that we yeah, are really good. trying to seek agreement and reconciliation, um, which is, again, why we try to fight more vulnerably. And we've gotten quicker, I think, at it. Yeah, um, Yeah. The, the quicker you can get, kind of, instead of fighting face-to-face, -face, you want to fight shoulder-to-shoulder, -shoulder, right? Mm -hmm. Not fighting against each other, but fighting for and with each mm -hmm. other. I think that's the key. And fighting naked is always kind of the first thing that gets us going down that healthier route because mm 
so easy not to be healthy in this area. Yeah. yeah. I wanted to ask, what's the time frame for that after an, a disagreement or an argument? Do you immediately go into fight naked mode or do you give it time <laughs> after the blow up? And just uh, to clarify, it, there's a literal application to this too, right? There's The literal one is like 0. 0.3 seconds. That's the timing. <laughs> yeah. Okay. It takes you that long just to be <laughs> completely distant, but I cannot imagine the YouTube comments we're going to get on that. I can't. I mean, they're just rolling through my head like a yeah. fast. I'm not going to read them at all. All right. Sorry. Ms. Poe had a great question. Yeah. That's that's a good question. I, yeah, I think a lot of it depends on what the disagreement is about because sometimes I tend to get very emotionally charged and I've learned in my mm -hmm. 36 years of life that talking while I'm emotionally charged is never productive. <laughs> it's never good for us. It's never good for me. Mm -hmm. um, the Lord is gracious and sanctifying me in this area mm -hmm. constantly. But I've learned that I need to take a step back for probably... 15, 20 minutes to yeah. breathe, to gather myself, to get some clarity on exactly what I'm fighting about and mm -hmm. why I'm feeling that way. Um, otherwise, he's a very good arguer and he's a very good, he's very good on the offense and I'm not good on the defense. And so it can very much be a, my bitterness can start growing the more mm -hmm. that he, I feel he's attacking mm -hmm. me mm -hmm. and not like being on my side. So I need some time to mm -hmm. kind of reconcile before I can go in and say, Sounds okay, good. let's really kind of duke this out without our weapons and let's talk about what the what the issues really are here, not just that yeah. you're wrong all the time. Right, because that gets old to them and then they just get tired of hearing that, yeah. yeah. So. <laughs> well, I've, uh, yeah, you just got totally like I lost my train of thought. Exactly. <laughs> but we had recently, we had uh, a fight where... Mm -hmm. It was not productive at all. And I think, uh, you know, your spouse, you know, the buttons. I was trying to be um, kind of more pragmatic about it and not get emotionally wrapped up in it. But you were so, and I'm being honest, you were very emotional. You were emotional. a little bit more emotional, I felt like. Do you even know I what was. I'm talking about yes. right now? <laughs> she doesn't even know the fight yes, I'm talking I do. about. That one time. You know, I, I was like, hey, so you, we had to give it some time to breathe, right? Because so, so often we want to like, no, I, I want to figure this out now because – it's relevant now, and darn it, I'm not going to let this time pass. <laughs> but I said, I just, I, I need to just step out. I need to go for an hour and just go, and I'm not leaving forever. I'm not leaving for the night. I'm yeah, just leaving to, to let this yeah. breathe. Yeah. And I can get to a healthier place. And I think providentially, God was good. I was able to kind of find a spot that was really rejuvenating for, for my heart and for my, my emotional Mm -hmm. being and i was able to kind of cool off and i came back and that particular fight i was like i walked through the door i had a really cool thing co cool story to share with her i walked through the door i said yeah i'm sorry whatever are we done <laughs> she goes yeah we're good and that was the end of this like massive fight That's great. there's other times when we have to let it really you have to let it, it breathe like that and yeah. then you have to process yeah. through it yeah. yeah it felt massive but in the moment and once we stepped out of it we realized it wasn't that that mm -hmm. big but again, yeah, there are some, some moments where you do need to take some time to really process maybe with other couples and kind of right. walk through that. Right. So. That's so relatable. I love that. I want to bring yeah. up James. James? Yeah. A lot of my, my head went to, you know, kind of like in the Bible, it says, hey, don't let the sun uh, yes. go down on your anger. Uh, so yeah. and you guys are saying, hey, maybe wait. It may be an overnight kind of thing. Isn't possibly. That Ephesians? Well, Is that Ephesians? I think it's in. I think it's. We'll just say it either or. Okay. Know. I think, I think it's, it's Ephesians James, four. But, it's in the Bible. It's there. So on that, we've we've gotten a good deal of pushback on that because we're of the mindset that that is, in general, that's a good literal thing to do, right? Don't don't let don't go to sleep until you've got some semblance of mm -hmm. agreement, that you're either going to let it breathe together. You're not just going to ignore it. I think the spirit of that verse and that passage is really what's important, and that's you don't just sweep it under the rug because something happens mm -hmm. when you go to sleep. Okay. Right, you wake up and your 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 heart is kind of new. Your emotions are totally reset. Mm -hmm. You're rested. You're thinking things clearly. A lot of times, the tendency is we had this huge fight last night, and we just said, you know what, screw it. We're not going to mess with this anymore. And we swept it under the rug. And now we we both slept and we woke up. And now we're not going to deal with it. Well, what that does is that creates a root of bitterness mm -hmm. that will that will take seed in your marriage over time. So I think there's ways to let the sun set literally on the argument without doing that and sacrificing it and doing that um, kind of in the unliteral sense mm -hmm. in that you're actually saying, hey, th I know we're not in a good spot. I know this is going to take some time. We're not going to ignore this in the future. But just for right now, we just need to rest our hearts and our minds because we're not being productive or loving toward each other. Mm -hmm. I think that's a really mature thing to do. People will push back on that. I think that's one of these, it's not a, 
a primary issue in the in mm-hmm. the faith, but it's something I think we have some some liberty in. Right. Yeah. So if I was summing that up, of you guys have rules for your own fights, you will will do some stuff and won't do others. Is one mm-hmm. take a time out, walk away, make sure you're not too emotionally charged, where you're going to end up. Right. You know, just <laughs> I pictured a white trash fight on the front lawn, throwing like eggs and spatulas at each other and weird stuff. But uh, so so do that. Uh, avoid things like saying always and never. Don't play past hurts and mom. You're just like your mother or father kind of thing. Yeah. Are there other rules before I move on and dive into this? Yeah, I mean, one thing I think is really helpful and has been for us is focusing on um, honestly honing in on what those emotions are, those underlying things are. Right? As a guy, I'm I'm like I I don't really feel the need to to figure that stuff out all the time but anytime i have taken the time to say here's what exactly i'm feeling here's why i'm feeling this way and using i know psychologists have been using this for years it's using i language versus you language Mm -hmm. or like you 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 instead of i when this happened i felt this way or i felt kind of vulnerable or betrayed in this way or like you changed something and that language is very disarming so again using the analogy of fighting kind of in a battle is the goal is to you like Selena said you're not the trying to, to win. hurt and maim <laughs> <Yeah. Going. laughs> you're not trying to kill and maim each other you're trying to get back yeah. to a place where you can be in agreement right and so yeah. you disarm each other <clears throat> trying to disarm those defenses mm-hmm. and so, and sometimes the tools to get there are things like language so yeah I'd say just put a put a word to how you're feeling and then use I language to describe that I think is the last thing I'd say all right very cool, cool. Selena anything to add no nope. oh cool uh, yeah. Fierce Marriage, here's your book. Uh, Miss Poet and I just started a small group at our church, so we've got some newlyweds, nearlyweds, and we're all gathering around. We got everyone a copy of this book, so we're about to jump in. We've already peeked ahead, and it looks really awesome. Guys, I encourage you to check this out. But guys, can you kind of tell me the underpinnings of how did you found Fierce Marriage? Why is this, uh, you know, now your full-time job. You guys were doing some stuff, and y'all went full-time Fierce Marriage because the movement took off so much. People people need what you're putting out. We need yeah. what you're putting out. It's yeah. been helpful to us. And I know we're old buddies and friends, but seriously, you've done good work, good job. Uh, talk to us about your book and your movement in general. Yeah, we started Fierce Marriage about six years ago. Um, we had had couples in our lives that had kind of gotten married when we did and then gone through a divorce and uh, got remarried in some cases twice in kind of the first five to seven years uh, of our marriage, we had seen this this pattern happen and we're like, God, what is going on? Why are we still together? Why are we still happy to be together and thriving and feel like we just got married two years, maybe not the first year? No. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but why do we, why are we just, you know, happy together? Why is, why, why? And it always came back to the Lord. It always came back to Jesus, it always came back to God. He was always our underlining He's our foundation. He's everything about us. And so we just felt like we needed to to share that and not in a sense of like, oh, hey, we've done all these things right. We know it all. But more in a sense of, hey, we know that there's other couples struggling like we've been struggling. So maybe if we share openly and transparently mm-hmm. kind of what, what we struggle through and how God's um, kind of helped us navigate some of those waters, maybe it'll help other people as well. And it's really been such a blessing to us because the more that we are, the more that fierce marriage has just kind of become its own um, ecosystem and this whole beast. It's it's requiring more of us to to know God more, which is such an mm-hmm. awesome thing to be able to do, um, to just know God and how He wants and understand His design for marriage and His purposes for marriage. So we came with like so so the fierce idea comes in with this idea that we are called to love each other mm-hmm. with a fierce tenacity that never gives up and never gives in, and that and that's where it gets dicey because. And I think the, and unequivocally that example and the exemplar and that that fuel to love is mm-hmm. is the person mm-hmm. and work of Jesus Christ, not just myself, not some other definition of love, mm-hmm. but there has to be some concrete, objective definition of love, and it's Jesus. And so mm-hmm. that's that's what we said. Okay, we let's just start spilling our guts, like Selena mm-hmm. said. For better or worse, we've had these successes, these failures, mm-hmm. and we're just going to share. Mm-hmm. And that's uh, that was about five five six years ago, mm-hmm. and we've just been. Um, kind of add it since we start with the books the blog and now the podcast and, mm-hmm. and we got some other stuff in the works as always but that's kind of where it started yeah all right good great you got anything to add miss poe no. no doing good <laughs> <laughs> i just want to hear from you yeah. <laughs> so uh selena you'd mentioned the lord obviously you guys are christians and uh just uh, some of our viewership uh, definitely isn't feeling god religion stuff how is it that uh 
you know, how is it that God or Jesus is at the center of relationship? How's that making things better? Yeah, sorry to kind of jump in there. I, I, wanna, no, I want I want everybody to, to be together on this. So, um, yeah, you know, I think when we, we've decided, you know, we decided to follow the Lord at very young ages and to have a biblical worldview to understand the ways of God and how he defines love um, has really outlined and set the boundaries for where and how we love and how we live uh, with each other and how we operate in our community. Um, you know, we all have different definitions of love, right? Like love could be a feeling. Love, uh, it, it's supposed to make me happy, right? It's supposed to be all these things. But right. I don't think those are sustainable always. Um, and I feel like they always depend on us. And that can be very enslaving and hard. Mm -hmm. um, and we are guilty of that. I think mm. we're guilty of trying to love each other out of just ourselves. Yeah. But uh, for us, subscribing to Jesus and Christianity, uh, God shows us a bigger and more freeing way to love. Um, that yeah. Christ first loved us when we were unlovable. And while we were still sinners, he died for us. And that has really... Um, I feel like liberated mm. our marriage to That's be good. able to love each other, especially when we are very unlovable <laughs> to each other. Yeah, and I, I love this is what I love about what you guys are doing with Warrior Poet Society is that the idea is so much. It, it, one of the core tenets is that you're deep thinkers, mm -hmm. right? And you actually think deeply about things that are important, right? I don't think anybody's going to say love isn't important, right? Having right. a marriage that lasts isn't. Everybody's going to. They want to agree. Everybody's going to agree that I want a marriage that lasts my lifetime. I don't want to get married and get divorced five years later. <laughs> Nobody wants yeah. that. So if we actually go into these important things and we think deeply about them, mm -hmm. very quickly, without any outside source of authority, you get to the end of, of the line. Meaning that where do you, like if you ask, we did a thing when we wrote the book, it's in there. We said, we asked we, we, um, a number of people, what, what does love actually mean, mm -hmm. right? People that aren't believers. And you get the whole gamut of, of replies. And essentially, it's all vapid. There's no actual definition for love mm -hmm. outside of what we see in the Christian worldview, namely in, in 1 Corinthians 13, in Ephesians 5, in 1 John, when we love as he first loved us. Those, and then we then were pointed to the life and work of Christ to be our mm -hmm. definition of love. Okay, now I actually have some foundation to build a life on. Now, when, we, we can get into the apologetics of Christianity. Now, John, you're, I know you're an apologetic guy. I think Christianity offers the most honest intellectual platform to reach for the greatest good, sure. right? You can think you're a thinker. But really, if you get down into it, like the the historicity of it, the apologetics mm -hmm. part of Christianity to me is just very honest, very circumspect, and that it looks at philosophy, the human condition, science, all that mm -hmm. kind of stuff, and you can still um, reach for the greatest good. So that's kind of where we landed on it, and that's why we've just gone all in. And that, what else can we live for? We really can't. I can't honestly live for anything else but Jesus, and that naturally flows into our marriage. So long answer. So sorry. There you go. That's great. <laughs> That's excellent. And I love what Selena said before about how you guys, um, you really can't love each other much out of yourselves. You have to lean on your faith. And so um, with that in mind, do you think that you would give advice for couples to lean more towards passion or friendship or both? Or what's the percentage mm -hmm. there? How does that work out, passion and friendship? Well, I'll answer. So uh, one of the big things that everybody talks about in this space in, around around marriages and keeping it exciting is dating, right? You always have to make it a priority. On our podcast, you guys talked about your dating mm -hmm. rhythms and how that's an important part of protecting your marriage. Well, dating, the whole point of dating is to put yourself in a place where you can have focused time with mm -hmm. each other. You can create a new experience together. And in that sense, you can refocus on your friendship and connect mm -hmm. in a than the way you originally did, which is through your friendship. So often our dating gets lazy, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Let's go to a dinner and a movie, go home, fall asleep, and it's just there's no heart and soul in it. Yeah. And so to answer your question, getting back to that friendship, I think is the very first part in, in fighting for your marriage. When you get back to your friendship, the passion will mm -hmm. will well up naturally. Mm -hmm. That it, the, the learning to love is something that you'll, you'll fight for naturally. Mm -hmm. But friendship is such a gift from God. I think we underrate it sometimes. Mm -hmm. And just laughing together, enjoying each other, mm -hmm. uh, listening and talking to each other, um, enjoying uh, uh, new experiences together, life mm -hmm. experiences, all that's part of your friendship. And I think I'd start there. The passion, everything else will flow from it. Yeah. Awesome. You just did a podcast on that, right? About memorable dates. 
Yeah, yeah, exactly. That was one of our <laughs> okay. one of our latest ones. You're yeah. a good listener. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Very good. Speaking of memories, we go way back, and we <laughs> yes, talked about did. books and stuff. Uh, any fun stories you remember from our past? <laughs> uh, so we, that one up. All right. How about that? Have you ever been almost arrested? <laughs> Did to nudge, nudge, tell that story. We told the full story. It'll be coming out on your podcast. But it's yes. too epic of a story. We go way back. Uh, guys, yeah. if y'all didn't know it, I've, uh, I've really had two really best friends over the course of my life and I couldn't settle between them uh, when it was time to select a best man. I'm like, hey, you know what? This is my marriage. One best man. I'll have two. And he was, it was either that or break a pool stick in half, leave him in a room and say, you guys figure out who's best man. And so uh, both of them cowardly didn't go that route. I had a video set up. It was going to be awesome. It would have been sad, but it would have been cool. Um, <laughs> it's, a, it's a little morbid. I would have won, I'm just going to say. Totally wouldn't have won. You know. He's too uh, much anyway, I, I had two. Uh, I had two best men, and Ryan was one of them. So we go way back. But I'm thinking to the time we drove across the country. Yes, uh, that was fun. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, Washington so State, gotten, Georgia. You, you had just gotten out of the army, yeah. right? And you, you, you. I think called me, and you're like, "Hey, I got to drive to Georgia. Do you want to come?" <laughs> and basically, you were going to drive home, yeah. and I was like. I've learned a few things in life. One of the things I've learned is never turn down a road trip cross country with, with one of your best friends. <laughs> and so I said, yes, without hesitation. And I think within a few days you were packed up everything into one, into your truck, yeah. everything you owned was in your truck. Well, except for like your, mo your motorcycle, which was at in Georgia, whatever. But, <laughs> whatever. and we, and so we ended up driving and we, and I remember having the conversation. You said, Hey, we can either go North, we can go South. We can go down through like Bryce Canyon, Arches National Park, or we can go North through like the, through uh, what Mount, the, Rushmore. Mount Rushmore, and uh, naturally I was like, "Well, let's go, let's go north." It was the summertime, so that made sense. And all along the way, we had seen postcards that said that you know that had lights shining on this beautiful national monument. It's a you know piece of art, and of course, it's open all all the time because it's this it's this massive like. We assumed it was. We open. assumed yeah. it's open all the time. It's a mountain. <laughs> and of Key course, point. John, you and I, we rolled up what like at ten o'clock at night, and yeah. and we realized that we weren't. We, our, our assumption was wrong, <laughs> and it was, in fact, shut down entirely, but that wasn't going to stop us because we drove that entire way for that attraction. And how do you close a mountain? Why, how would we have known that you closed right. down a mountain at night? Yeah, so, you can't close down a mountain. Knowing. They closed yeah, a mountain. So we, we, where there wasn't a way, we made one, and yeah. we, we effectively just drove up. I think the exit was open, so we drove up the exit. The park ranger came and saw us. He basically... <laughs> Almost put us in jail, and then until he found out, he found out you were an ex ranger just getting out of the army, and then all of a sudden he was starstruck, which was awesome. I didn't, I was never in the army, so I can't say anything cool like that. <laughs> and uh, he effectively he said, "Well, you know what? I'm going to call in a favor." So he called down to the other guy, and they turned the lights on specifically for us, and he gave us a guided tour, videotaping us and giving us photography all the way up. <laughs> <laughs> it was like this weird like bro date. <laughs> We were getting, like photographed the whole time. Yeah, absolutely oh. awesome. We had some fun. Yeah, for sure. Um, <laughs> I, I didn't post it, but I found like an old text message battle that we had a long time ago, where we were trying to show the other one that we were more spiritual. And so I have, nice. I literally just pulled it up on the screen. Uh, I don't know whether I'll actually post it, but it was just absolutely ridiculous. This is probably 15 years old. Where we went back oh, and yeah. forth where we were trying to do spiritual one-upmanship in the most obnoxious, Christian-y, <laughs> detestable way. And I saved it. I thought it was so funny. I don't think anybody else will think it's funny. But. I think I think 90% of our, of our friendship is based on sarcasm and glibness. So yes. there you have it. You have my exact <laughs> same sense of humor you just might be a little better at it than me which is really obnoxious i'm a little bitter so. but uh man yeah that's really cool well guys y'all have anything to add and uh where can we find you well um nothing really to add i mean there's obviously lots you can talk about in terms of marriage and relationships so to that end just search fierce marriage in google mm -hmm. you can find us uh we're primarily on uh instagram and facebook we're on twitter as well but um yeah and then on you can find the fierce marriage podcast we post there weekly and then we do interviews every other week so there's every every other week there's two episodes mm -hmm. so yeah subscribe there and uh we talk about everything nothing's off limits mm -hmm. and it's all from uh, a christian worldview and we just 
we're real, we're yeah. raw, we're honest, and uh, sometimes that's beautiful. Sometimes that's that's ugly. So. <laughs> Very that's good. Funny. Hey, uh, I'd also like to mention, guys, they have some pretty cool devotionals. Your two is one devotional, and so some pretty cool stuff there. And now just for search engine optimization stuff, I'm going to say the words, fight naked, fight naked, naked, naked. <laughs> so uh, take that, Google, yeah. on YouTube. <laughs> now it'll be really popular. <laughs> said the word naked. It blew up. <laughs> so uh, Ms. Bo, you got anything? That's it. Yeah. Thank you, guys. Yeah. It's been so great. Thanks for having us. Thanks for having us. It was fun. Yeah, of course. We'll see you guys. Take it easy. All right.